Hello and welcome to Film Seizure. We are in the midst of another trip to Australia with our March Madness. Um, what does that equate to? It equates to the Mad Max movies. Um, we are now talking about Mad Max 2, or as those in America would know it, the Road Warrior, because there was no Mad Max here. Um, for all, you know, whatever. We didn't know that movie really when we were younger. There was Mad Max, but it was not very well liked. Wasn't well, well liked in our generation was brought up on this one. Right. For sure. 100%. Yeah. It was a total rebrand. And it works. Yes, yes. Yep. total rebrand. That is Jason Oliver. Hi, Jason. How are hello, you? Hello, hello. And also with us, drinking a cider boy, is <laughs> Jeff Arbuckle. Hi, Jeff Arbuckle. Hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, this is the uh, tale of how I grew up from being the feral kid. <laughs> but you know today. <laughs> and eventually the leader leading of the, the Northern, Northern Clan. Eventually, yeah, eventually. Yeah. 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 I never shot. saw the Road Warrior ever again. Never did, no. <laughs> No, you sure did narrate now. that damn movie. <laughs> yeah, you narrate the <laughs> fuck out of that movie. Um, Mad Max, 1981. Um, as I revealed last week, I don't know if I ever saw Mad Max. If I did, I don't remember a fucking thing about it. So this is my introduction and what I think of mostly when I think of Mad Max or Mel Gibson's Mad Max. Yeah. Right. Um Things have changed over the years, but 1981, George Miller's second ent entry. And as Jason was alluding to last week, I guess kind of a miracle that he got to make this movie because he almost lost directing he, the he, first one. He did almost quit. Yeah, he, he almost did, quit. He, like he, he did just didn't want to do it. Yeah, it wasn't that he was going to have it taken away from. He was just like, I'm going to quit because he was so, having a miserable time. I, I think did that's kind of a about George Miller MO too. I think he... I think he generally has a miserable time making some of these movies, but, <laughs> but like, I, I think there were stories about him on Fury Road where he was just like, man, this is just miserable, but he's got it such looks a miserable. Yeah. All of them look miserable. <laughs> like, who wouldn't want to fucking be out there? Exactly. I wouldn't. Exactly. <laughs> but I, I think a good time to ask you this question, Jason, because maybe, you know, are you, I'm sure, you know, George maybe. Miller, this is his universe, right? Did yeah. he, it was his idea. He created it. I know he d wrote, had a co-writer for yeah. the first, at least. Yes. But yeah, I mean, yeah, for all intents and purposes, I mean, him and his, who was it that he co-wrote um, Mad Max with? Um, Byron Kennedy? No. That was James the co-producer. McLausland. Oh. But, um, but no, he didn't write, he didn't, he wasn't involved in this one. It was um, a couple other co-writers. Perry Hayes um, and Brian Hanout. Yes. And, um, but yeah, I mean, these are, this is George Miller. Um, I guess Bri Brian Kennedy does that get credit for, um, the character, character creation because I think they did kind of come up with the concept of Mad Max together. And then, um, Brian Kennedy produced, I believe, the first one and they produced this one. Yeah. So yeah, he's got like a little bit of character credit, but um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty much George Miller's like playground. Yeah, and yeah. I saw this as a kid, and as I mentioned last week, my dad told me, "Don't even worry about the first one. You this first five minutes here is enough," um, which is kind of surprising. That indicates my dad saw Mad Max. Or maybe he never... didn't, and he just maybe it was one of those things too, or like he heard heard it was bad and just never right. bothered. Yeah, right. could have could have very well. And um, again, like access wasn't really a thing either for a long time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly couldn't find the original back when I was a kid. What I will say, and I did uh, say last week, is that Mad Max was like an idea, and this is George Miller like fully realizing that idea because this movie is. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's like, I want to take all the bits that really worked from Mad Max and then make a movie with just that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, it is very low on drama, but there is, there are still some really well conceived characters and human interactions. Like the world feels real. The people feel real. The stakes feel real. 
Um, he didn't skimp on any of that, but but he definitely sped things up. Right. right. And the high stakes create the drama. Like there is yeah. no drama in the story, really, but there's drama in the stakes. So yeah. you're feeling it as the movie is going along. What about you, Jeff? What you, I, I assume you saw this as a youngster. Oh, yeah. As well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my mom is a, was, or well, more was, I guess. She, she really liked Mel Gibson. So you better believe that I got to see a lot of Mel Gibson movies just because, oh, the new one's on, uh, HBO or it's out on video. I'm going to rent it or I'm going to record it or whatever, you know. And it was, I, this probably would have been the movie that, that, she would have maybe seen first either this or Gallipoli, I would think. And they yeah, both came Gallipoli. out the same year. Um, but yeah, yeah. she, she, uh, I grew she's, up with that one. Yeah. She's a big fan of, uh, Mel Gibson. So yeah, it's always been around and it's the one that also, I mean, like when you, when, it, when, when you have three brothers also and it's like four guys, it's like the road warrior is some badass business. Yeah. It's a That's serious a t- testosterone happening. Yeah. yeah. For sure. For sure. That makes sense. I, I honestly, this is one another one of those where I couldn't tell you the first time I saw it. it I probably saw it in bits and pieces on TV over Man, many God, watches. I played, yeah, I played on TV so much. You were probably and more so, beyond Thunderdome child, I'm guessing. But maybe, no, like, no, I knew I knew this before Thunderdome. Um, well, when did Thunderdome come uh, out? Uh, Chuck, Chuck, can we can we just get beyond Thunderdome? <laughs> yeah, we should get beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> Thunderdome was like 88, 85. 85. You, could, oh. you could be right, Chuck. You could be right about that. I probably knew Thunderdome before I knew The Road Warrior. Um, More lines up with your age. But yeah, it, it does. depends and, on when and, you and, saw and, it. And like, I think, that, I think that's probably true because it took me a while to even know that Mad Max and the Road Warrior were connected. Right. Right. And that's, I think, when I started realizing probably not, probably I caught the Road Warrior on TV, but, I, but I'm but i almost positive I would have seen clips of the Road Warrior too, right? On TV at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Probably. Uh, in, in like simultaneously probably with with the, the hype and the hoopla of this one coming out. Yeah. But it's hard to say. Like it's it's just Mad Max is one of those ones. It's just always been with me in some way, and it's a little bit of a soup, like we were talking about last week of confusion. You know what happened in in Mad Max? What happened in Road Warrior? What happened in Thunderdome? It's all kind of it was all kind of soupy for me. Well, whatever from, happened in your Thunderdome, I don't want to know about Thunderdome. <laughs> the Thunderdome. <laughs> Um, Lots of lightning. We, um, we talked about like iconic it's shit. A, it's a whole lot it's of speakers lightning. out the window kind of business. Uh, passing around That's beers. <laughs> we talked about icon. Like you asked me about iconic stuff last week, and this yeah. one has more of those like things for, sure. for me. Like his dog, yeah, is like iconic to Max, right? Yep. Um, the gyrocopter, yep. iconic. Like yep. that was the coolest fucking thing I'd ever seen when I was like eight years old the feral kid. age the feral Iconic. kid yep i mean Iconic. We, i mean the, the lord humongous you know i mean yeah, yeah. it's like i mean lord beat, humongous. Beat jason Voorhees to the punch by like several years you know <laughs> <laughs> the uh Susan was joking she was like i want to see a, a friday the 13th movie where jason Voorhees is is dressed like lord humongous <laughs> oh my god, oh <laughs> With god. leather straps and everything <laughs> He dresses as him for Halloween. Yeah. Jason I mean, I dresses as Lord Humongous. Oh my God, that would be I, that'd be the best. <laughs> I kind of feel like uh, this is something that went through my head when I was watching this. But like, I think I know why Lord Humongous's crew is so angry. It's like they they live in a world where there are no longer any power bottoms. They're just like fucking lost without it. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I don't know. There's one riding in the back of well, that one. That's bike. the only one left. That that's the only one left. left. <laughs> and it's like, God damn it, we need more power bottoms. God damn it, I'm gonna get all dressed up for this, and this ain't gonna happen. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean they they are out to p- fucking party, man. Like if this movie <laughs> ran across, like I don't know, cruising. I mean, it would be. It, <laughs> It, it, it would be debaucherous. <laughs> what was what? What is the name of the the power bottom? Uh, did they? Did they 
<laughs> what was he know, credited like, as? I, he doesn't have a line. He just he just hangs out on the on the on yeah. the back seat of Wes's motorcycle. <laughs> uh, Verna Wells. Later, we've done a Verna Wells movie before. You remember Commando? Yep. yep. Um, man, he was tubby in that. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that character's name is. But hey, the uh, character is very peculiar in this movie. Because there's nothing to him other than him just sitting there, like almost well, completely what's, nude. What's to him is he gets uh, he gets to show he gets you get, the audience gets to see what that boomerang can do. Yeah, that's yeah, what the he's there for. Oh, uh, it's yeah. the golden yeah. youth. The golden youth. The is golden his name. youth. Okay, all right. Jerry O'Sullivan. Huh. Wouldn't that be funny if he was the dark one? <laughs> <laughs> that would be like the biggest letdown, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would, I kind of wish Lord Humongous was the dark one. <laughs> now that would yeah. be amazing. Yeah, see. <sighs> oh, yeah. If you don't, if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, check out last week's episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If the you didn't know, Mad of Max, Max existed. Max. Yeah. yeah. Oh man! <laughs> so, uh, what do we, how's this movie start, Chuck? Why do we not? Why do you not need the original Mad Max, the original in name only Mad Max? Yeah, because this movie within five minutes tells you that the two tribes, whoever they are, I'm guessing the U.S. and USSR, maybe at this time, I don't know. I don't know. Go it to war. like a whole lot of World War II footage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they go to yeah. war, and it results in oil shortages which basically impacts the entire economy the entire world system um i think we're maybe in the middle of that in the first mad max i don't really know where we're at in that process there's no even talk of war there at all so who knows well there's Um, there's a there's whole chunks of the society in the first one that seem to be living a regularly relatively (laughs) regular life you know yeah there's Uh, still like society yeah let's just say that yeah because there's no society totally broken down (laughs) currency is still a thing even right um yeah um but basically, <clears throat> civilizations collapsed. The world descended into barbarism. But somewhere in that time frame, Max was described in this movie as a military. I don't even know if they call them a military policeman in this movie. They just said, or not military, a motherfucking, motherfucking policeman. policeman yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but his family was killed. And that led him to basically just madness and he's been roaming the roads ever since alone i mean like he alone. he's yeah. with his dog mm-hmm. or his Australian dingo i don't know if it's a dingo or no, a dog. it's not Australian a dingo. cattle dog yep okay. it's not a dingo i wondered that too but yeah no it looks a little bit like a blue heel which is i think a similar breed okay yeah mm. Look at, um, look at Jason over there at the American Kennel I Club. I love Blue Hills. They're, they're super cute. I thought it was a Blue Hill when I first saw it, but Australian Cattle Dog makes way more sense. Sure, sure. So, sure, yeah. Sure. They, so, basically, he's haunted by the death of his <clears throat> family, and he's just wandering the road. In the beginning of the movie, they cut to him being chased by a biker gang, and he's running low on fuel. So, he, like, turns off his whatever the v8 engine or the fuel he breaks the the guys fly by him and i think he ends up killing one of them and wes and wes excuse me and another guy who could have gotten the best of him here while he's trying to take fuel out of a truck basically turn heel and leave Mm -hmm. yeah yeah they're like uh, is this is he is he too much for for me to handle right now right He, he has a shotgun yeah not yeah. worth the trouble right now. Yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait till I have the power of the group. If we can, if we encounter this guy again, yeah, yeah. So after that, Max kind of fucks off from there, and he runs into. He sees the gyrocopter. Yeah, just sitting on the road because he needs um, fuel. He needs he's, fuel. He's, he's out of fuel. Yeah, he's gotten a little from that truck, or a little something from that yep. truck, because he was scraping it off the road with a towel. Oh, well, he was squeezing it. Yeah, with the yeah. with the washcloth. Yeah. And that lets you know, like, if it isn't explained to you, like, fuel is very, very sparse and you can't Precious. use any on the road, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and he gets out of his car and he goes to check on the gyrocopter and there's a snake coiled around it. 
and Max is just fast as fuck, right? He the snake lunges at him and he grabs it, and as he grabs it, the gyro captain, some guy we don't know yet, just shoots out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm like I'm trying to figure out how he laid this trap. It's really weird. Well, he, he how, did the thing how long the... is he gonna hang out down there? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I'm guessing that he did the. Th- Have you ever seen? I think this is probably. Well, I think he, I think he's practicing for his his role in the next movie. Because well, Bruce Brentz plays a plays a strikingly similar character yeah. in the next movie. Yeah, he does. <laughs> well, so much so that there's always been the question, right? It's like, is that is the same? It's the guy? same. It's, again, yeah. it's it's the, that sort of mythology, right? Exactly. Interchangeable like, characters, different stories. Yeah. My suspicion is is that he uh, does the thing, uh, and I'm guessing this is also another Australian thing. But have you ever seen the the one spider who buries itself under, like, oh uh, yeah, under sand, and he's like, yeah. and then. And then it waits to jump out. You know, it's it like, looks oh, like a freaking this. face hugger. Yeah, it's I know. Creepy. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, well, <clears throat> gross. <clears throat> anyway. Those like sea spiders look like that too. Ugh. Yeah, so nasty. Anyway, but no, I'm I'm guessing that he just this is his thing. He he's able to do the thing where he can like just burrow real quick. I mean, this is whatever Australia. <laughs> even the people are dangerous. That's what um, Bruce yeah. Spence. Bruce Spence is our gyro, a gyro, a captain, gyrocopter pilot, right? Is that what his role is? They call him gyro captain in the movie. The gyro yeah. captain, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people would recognize this guy from the cars that ate Paris. Yeah. Um, Mad Dog Morgan once again. You know, open casting, man. Pull up the the, the call sheet from Mad Dog Morgan, and you'll get a lot of these movies. Um, He's also the guy in Revenge of the Sith that tells Obi Wan that General Grievous is there. On that is plane. he really? He's the vampire guy. He's like the Nosferatu looking dude. Oh wow, yeah. that's cool. Uh, Midnight Spares. That's another one. Um, he plays a, a mechanic in that kind of a, a crazy guy, like like the Gyro Captain. Um, he always plays kind of those those highly eccentric roles really well. Um, good stuff. And then he shows up, of course, next week's movie, Thunderdome. Yeah, um, so Max gets the best of him, basically, by... He kind of leads him to his car. He turns off the the booby trap that would cause the car to go boom. If he tried to steal his gas. Yeah, and, he even tells him, it's like, it's booby trap, man. Don't yeah. even try it. I know, and then and then the gyro captain's like, if I was quick like you, I'd probably hide a hide a knife or a weapon under the car. Yeah, so yeah. then he sheathes the knife back. But what ultimately undoes the gyro captain here is the dog. The dog yeah. jumps out of the window and knocks him over, and they overpower him. And then he handcuffs him. And in order for him, the gyro captain, not to be killed or maimed or whatever's going to happen with him, he's like, hey. I know of a place that has a shit ton of fuel. They're producing this stuff. Chunk, 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 I'll show chunk, you yeah. where it is. Yeah, chunk, 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 chunk. Yeah. yeah, I'll show you where it is if you keep me alive. So that's kind of like the premise of this movie is that place, right? Yeah, because because uh, when he takes him to the place, uh, yeah, it's like the pretty much the rest of the movie takes place in in a very very close proximity to this place. Um, yeah. And yeah, because when when um, the gyro captain takes him there, he he um, kind of ties him up or whatever to a to a to a stick in the ground, and he's like, "I thought you said you'd let him let me go." He's like, "No, I said I would kill you." Right. So well, like, pretty good you know, deal. Yeah, pretty good deal. Max uh, Max means what he says. <laughs> yeah. He he's lost a lot of his humanity, and you can tell in the next scene because he he ends up watching the place for a good twelve hours, fourteen hours. He's studying um, he's studying the ins and outs of the place. Uh, who yeah, comes I, in? Who goes out? And I think almost a full day happens, and the next day you see kind of you kind of can tell that the bikers are coming in, so you kind of think it's Wes's gang that's coming in. You see them come in, and you see them leave in the morning. And as they're leaving, a buggy tries to get by him, and they flip the buggy over, shoot the man in the chest, and then rape the woman, which I don't remember that being so kind of... It's a little bit graphic in this. Yeah. Like They don't show it all, but you're like, it's pretty obvious what's going on. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Way more than the first week. It's oh, almost yeah. like a redo of that scene a little bit from the people that flee the town. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. But, but again, it's kind of like pieces of the first movie that maybe don't quite connect get redone and and done more completely or or better in this yeah movie, you know yeah but uh, but yeah i mean but like this does trigger something in max to say on well, i i gotta go down there and see what's going on but he waits he does he does he waits he waits until it's over almost it's like i'm not i'm not a hero we don't need another hero right we we don't thunderdome <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't need another Thunderdome. <laughs> but that's like the, his humanity is kind of gone because even the man that's there who's dying, he sees him as a way into the town to get gas. Yeah. He doesn't really want to care to save him. No. Right. It, he's a bargaining chip. Yeah. And uh, by the way, this is the part where, uh, where he just opens up a, a, a big old can of Dinka Dings or whatever they called it, <laughs> whatever is Dinka Dings or I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a brand of dog food and he's like, Oh, he's going to feed his dog. That's nice. No, he doesn't at all. He eats the whole can. No, well, he throws he the can to, to the can. He throws the can to the dog. The dog eats some, and then that's you a big see, dog. It needs a lot more than what he left. Well, the it dog doesn't some. even finish because because yeah. yeah, the gyro captain is is using his fingers to get the rest of it out. They yeah. share it, just not in like a real normal way. <laughs> true. That's a, very yeah, true. Even even the dog, you know, is not. But very there's normal a clear pecking just... order here. It's Max yeah. dog gyro captain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no he uh and again this is like oh yeah it's like in lethal weapon he's gonna eat like dog biscuits or whatever yeah it's like yeah mad uh, like like in mad mel made a lot of money on a lot of made a whole career after eating dog shit <laughs> uh yeah so he um yeah he goes down he finds you know they because um the girl gets um when he gets down there there is still member of the of the gang down there that messed up the guy and the girl because the guy ends up shooting the girl with a um a crossbow the crossbow budget in this movie is out of control oh my gosh yes there's so many crossbows the so crossbows many getting stuck in shoulders there's uh -huh. bolts getting stuck in people there's yeah nobody takes them out the right way either they all like pull them out and then instead of pushing them through it's yeah. craziness well yeah. bolts aren't uh, i guess bolts don't have the the not arrow always. Hooks, so it's yeah, not not, as, not always yeah yeah conceivably these could be smoother bolts but but still. but but i think it's um which one is it that it's it's actually clearly cut off and you can see it sticking out where where the, the arrow has been snapped, and he still pulls it out instead of yeah. <laughs> pushes it through. It's like, oh god! He yeah. just wanted to make it. <laughs> he just wanted to look as tough and gross as possible. Yeah, as well, he, it's Australia, as he, man. It's yeah. tough times. Tough times in the tough town tonight. I think I think it was um, Wes who does that. Yeah, he pulls it yeah. instead of or he yeah. pulls it out yeah. instead of pushing it through. And it's all bulged in his bicep. It's like, oh god. Yeah. He's just trying to look cool and tough. It's very, right? yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Looking, gross. He's looking for his next bitch. <laughs> but why are compound bows or crossbows so prevalent in this? Because ammunition is very sparse. Well, yeah, it's, uh, those are easily remade and restocked. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Or reused from whomever you <laughs> shot with them if they're dead. Yank them out. Yep. Yank yep. them out yep. and move on. Because uh, we find out that Max has an empty one for the first quarter of the movie. Uh, yeah. shotgun yeah shotgun yeah and he's given shells and it's like a gift um yes you could barter with that shit uh-huh and uh the lord humongous has got a big old gun i don't know what kind of caliber gun that is that he keeps in a velvet case with five bullets yeah That's not all he even has enough left. for the full yeah no, all he has left is five bullets yep so obviously these days if you need someone name someone lord humongous it would be satire <laughs> right, right? What I'm was sure, it I'm then? Sure do you think satires? I don't know. I, here's my take. I on mean, this. he is pretty beefy. <laughs> here's my take on this. I, I the the you've got the Knight Rider and the Toe Cutter from the first movie, and the Knight Rider in that movie is he's he's almost like hyping himself up, and he's hyping up the the Toe Cutter, and he's referring to himself in the and I guess the th third person. Well, as, yeah, as he, the. He, as the Knight Rider. Well, he does. And he's, and he's, and he's, there's something else he says in that. 
Yeah, that, it's a whole that, litany of of like titles that but he's given one, himself. There's one specific thing he yells as he's driving off in that car in that first movie that comes back later. He wants Toe Cutter to see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. he said that, I was like, ah, I did, yeah. the, I did the whole Leonardo Witness. DiCaprio thing. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Witness. He, yeah, that idea grows. That idea for sure grows. Yeah, but but then you've got the Lord Humongous who. <laughs> What does he call himself? The the, the the warrior of the wasteland, the Ayatollah of rock and rolla. His malevolence courses through his huge pectorals, pulses visibly under his bald, sutured scalp. Um, He's got a fucked up head thing going on. You can tell from the back of it. He's Jason Voorhees. It's it, it's like it's well, it's like the gladiators, or mm-hmm. like the professional wrestlers, right? It's this. It's this kind of um, probably, honestly, mostly, I feel like it's probably you know more influenced by professional wrestling, right? It's like this this bravado of this this stage craft, this um, this kind of like uh, intimidation tactic, like kind of the peacock feathers, right? It's yeah, it's you know the kings too. You know how many titles did kings and emperors have when they were announced? Before the people, it's it's very much like all of that. Well, wasn't there a wrestler called the Road Warrior? Was there? I only know the Ultimate War. Yeah, we definitely have the <laughs> Ultimate Warrior. Um, and I mean, I mean wrestling just... was pro- was kind of getting big, like in the late seventies again, and early eighties. Yeah, there was, was WrestleMania name... one. That was. The Road Warriors were the Legion of Doom, so they were a duo. Okay, that Road was, Warrior yeah, there was Hawk a tag. and yeah. Road Warrior Animal. So yeah. that, that they was, were later. Think, they were after. They were this. later. They were kind of. It was kind of like the art imitating life, imitating art kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Which is funny. I it think. Is. I think. I am going to. Go as Lord Humongous for Halloween. Oh, please. And do. I'm going to make please you guys see do. this. I want to see that. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Um, well, I told you guys of will, rock and roller. If one of you guys will be Wes, I'll ride in the back of your bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no, what would be God. funnier? What would be funnier is if. Um, if if like you and I combined to be Master Blaster <laughs> for next week, <laughs> I don't think I would fit inside your chest. I, I don't think you would either. But that <laughs> would be funny. Well, no, there's no, there's a way to do this. You, one of you's got to get on the shoulders of the other, and then you wear a shirt or something that the other person's head, and you know, oh, yeah, like, yeah, stick yeah. Out. <laughs> that would work, but that would be really uncomfortable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my. like, oh, look, you came as two kids on top of each other wearing a trench coat. It's like, no, 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 no. This is Master Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, actually, actually damn Chuck, it. can we get beyond Thunderdome, damn it? <laughs> Chuck, you would actually have made a good um, Fifi from last week, though. Like, yeah, for, I'll, yeah, I'm just going to shave my beard. Yeah, yeah. Go mustache and start being like the sweet <laughs> big dude. It's going to be yeah. a Mad Max themed Halloween party. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, amazing. All right. So he, he, he takes the surviving guy from the car crash into the compound, right? Yeah. The, the oil refinery that they have barricaded against the marauders. And, um, and he's, he just says, Hey, look, you know, they, they don't trust him. They shouldn't trust him. They're being very smart about this. Um, who is this guy? Did he, is he the one who, who did, did this? this? Yeah. Right. I mean, that's kind of the thought. Um, they ask about the woman and he says, she's dead and they freak out. Um, but he's like, look, this guy promised me fuel. Um, if I brought him back, just give me fuel. I'll get out of your hair. And then it turns out that guy's dead. He didn't make it. And the leader of the gang says, well, sorry, uh, the deal died with him. Yeah. And he and he commotions to some of his people is like take care of this guy, like kill him. Um, but then at that moment is when the marauders attack again. Yeah, and they show up and they have a they have a deal. 
right? They're going to make yeah. a deal with the townspeople. And it's kind yeah. of funny because you have Wes who's like, fuck it, let's kill them. Yep. You have Lord Humongous, which I can't, I won't, I'll always laugh or stutter <laughs> when I say his name. Um, so, so saying good. like, no, we'll give you 24 hours if you, it, we'll let you, we'll give you safe passage, get the fuck out of here, and we'll take the tanker. But at the same time, Max is, is chained or handcuffed to a fence, but we got Pharaoh boy using his little system of tunnels and he comes out and he throws his gleaming boomerang yes, and misses everyone and then catches it. And then is going to throw it again at Wes and Wes ducks and it hits his, his power bottom in the head. <laughs> so the now golden, all the golden boy, is that what the best one's name is? The golden, no, the gold, yeah, the golden, yeah, gold the, uh, yeah, but the the last, the, it's the last power bottom. It's just like the last V eight <laughs> pursuit special. Everything you know, that like, was good in this world dies in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even the power bottoms. There, yeah, there's no room. There's no room for nice things. No. <laughs> It was chocolate cake last week. This week, it's Power Bottoms and V8s. Yeah. And, and next week, it's... No, they're all gone. Okay. We'll, ch- we'll, we'll check in next week. We'll check yeah, in we'll next ch- week. See what's yeah, maybe there are nice things next week. I can't remember. <laughs> well, I mean, Tina Turner's well, if there is, a nice you can find it place. at Barter Town. Yeah, yeah exactly. you can find it at Barter Town. That's not what I thought you were going to say, Jeff. I'm glad you went to place. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, she, I mean, she does. She has a nice place. No. I thought you were going to say something about Tina Turner herself. Well, no, she's nice too. I mean, but yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I mean, Tina is kind of known for her legs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, she she spent an entire career dancing those in the shape. So, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. um. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Oh, also, we should mention that Lord Humongous. Now you got me doing it, Chuck. <laughs> He's got guys strapped to the front of his car. And they're yeah. like, don't fucking trade with these people. They're going to kill you anyway. Because they were some of the other people who tried to, who were leaving. I, could, I think they were just scouts for a truck. Is that what they were doing? Is that why they left? They were trying to find a way out, I think. Because I wrote yeah. this in my notes at first. I'm like, where is he getting these people that he's stringing up? Because the ones that Max, the one guy that Max saved, where the woman was killed, they were only one of like two or three cars, I think. Yeah. Maybe just two cars. One went one direction, they went the other one. And I think they caught the other two, and that's who they have at the end of Lord Humongous's car. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is something this is some Fury Road business too. Yes, it is. To the front it's it's like a blood bag almost. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, the only thing missing here is the guitars and they come later. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They yeah. must have they must have found like Jim Ursay's house. You know, it just <laughs> He's the real rock and roll guy at all. <laughs> he might be Lordy Mungus. No, no, he's a Morton Joe. I guess they said, yeah. He's, they won't. Take that fucking mask off. You say, oh my God, it's a <laughs> Oh, God, that's oh, great. Gosh. For the for the non sports people in the audience, he is the owner of the Indianapolis Colts. So yeah. he is, we he's, are, known, we, he's known for having a very large. Um, uh, guitar collection. I mean, guitar. Oh, yes, very yes, yes, yes. humongous guitar collection. Uh, humongous, humongous guitar, guitar, collection. guitar <laughs> problem drug <laughs> collection. Yes, he has as many guitars as he does pill cases. Yeah. Oh God! <laughs> and he gets consistently pulled over. So anyway, anywho. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I guess you know, hooray! I'm sure the police. Road Warrior pulled him over at least once. <laughs> yeah, probably. And that's why he became Lord Humongous. <laughs> He has gained some weight, yeah. At time, yeah, yeah. We've at got different off the times of his here. life. Anyway, okay, well, the second so- time the feral boy throws the um, the the thing, the the hype man tries to catch it. Oh yeah, well, that's a dumb yeah. thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it saws his off fingers his off. fingers. Yeah, everybody laughs at him. Too. Everybody laughs. It's hilarious. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> What's well, funny? Well, it's yeah. like informing the audience. That it's okay to laugh because everyone else is laughing, but you're also barbaric. Yes, yeah, so you're laughing, laughing with the with the barbarians. Yeah, yes. <laughs> the only person who's not laughing is Wes because he's like all sad about his power bottom. Who just died. <laughs> <laughs> who's going to be his new power bottom? Because let's face it, it ain't going to be it ain't going to be Lord Humongous because everyone is his power. Bottom. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he has his pick. He has his pick. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think he chains that puppy to his car later. Because he, he has to, is it here where he has to choke him out? Yeah, he chokes him out because Wes he, wants to kill him. He everyone. wants revenge. Yeah. That's, he's like, you're yeah. right. Yep. Yeah, and, and then totally later another he, wrestling thing, Jason. So totally, yeah, yeah. Well, on. and then later when Wes was trying to fuck with Max, that's when he changed him. He's like, "We got to, we got to put you on the leash, buddy." Yeah, yeah. Because he calls him his puppy, I think, as he's choking yep. him out or whatever. Um, so they leave. All I'm saying is, there's some suggestive stuff in this one. Oh yeah, assless <laughs> chaps and and, and leather daddies. And, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's. I think there's a lack of women in the world, too, Absolutely. right? Like available yeah, women. Oh, yeah. Because they just kill them all. It's like you're stupid. Like, right. So to, these these try men to treat are, the lady you know, nice. You know. You know. And more Maybe. than Joe got it right later. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, these he men are probably did. sleeping and, and, with each other. In this. Oh, one. at this. Point, <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. But but yeah. there is but there is like tent couple. I think that's a, that's how they were um, credited. There is one of the marauders who is under the tent with a lady because the tent gets blown off. Oh, the tent oh, blows right. off. Yeah, and they're yeah. like getting down. So well, that guy's lucky, I guess. He's got the only woman in the gang. I'm yeah, surprised he's, the rest of the gang is graduated. But I'm surprised the rest of the rest of the gang respects that relationship. Oh, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, no, maybe it's just his day with her. Yeah, I hate to say it. I'm making a that's, grimace face. I'm kind of I mean, like, no, I mean, that's what would happen in this world. Yeah, yeah I kind of yeah. go. But you know who that won't happen to? Won't happen to our warrior woman inside the uh, compound. Oh, she is shit, a badass. No. She is badass. Um, She's a badass. There, who there is are two. That? I was Virginia, meant to look her um, up and see what else she's Virginia done. Hay. Um, she's in the Living Daylights. Uh, Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Not much else, though. She was in uh, Return of Captain Invincible, which I've not seen. Have Nobody's seen, seen Captain Invisible. Invincible. Invincible. <laughs> oh, my bad. I thought I had a good joke there. <laughs> almost. Almost. <laughs> Wait, that's the right, one Chuck. that they recently put out at Severn, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I've not seen it, but it looks funny. Um, it was directed Two by things. Philip, Philip, Philippe Mora, who did um, uh, Howling 2 and 3. Oh boy! Oh, both of them. Oh, yeah. um, those are two of the good ones, Jim. I like them. I like yeah. them. Oh man, I, are there really any good ones after one? Yeah, two and three, mm. and maybe even four. Mm. I uh, kind of like four too, a little bit. Yeah, I'm um, sure we gained some listeners during our Halloween or Howling Thon. So let us know if you're still listening. And, uh, yeah, let us please let us do know let us know. If you, uh, and if what you want you another think? one, because that was fun. Oh, we, did, we need to do something. You like guys that bailed. You guys bailed on one of those. I bailed on. It. I bailed on the last, the second to last one, because that was Seven. unwatchable. Seven. Yeah, there were no, fireworks going on I have, outside. I have I watched that multiple times. By the way, <laughs> it's and horrible. I, it is, but it's it is unwatchable. Okay, let's get back on track here. Okay, okay. two things. Feral boy is fucking rad. Yeah, the feral. Kid. I just want to say. The feral, feral kid, kid, feral boy, yep. whatever you want to call him, whatever they call him. <laughs> um, and Max tells the people at this point, because they're talking, they're going through their options. Some people are saying, let's let's give up. Let's well, there's take the one his lady offer. who is the most trusting person on the planet. Who's like always like, we should trust that person. Like she, yeah, everybody. What do we have to lose? What do we Probably have to lose? We everything. Should, right. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of our lives, if we're wrong, lady. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So there's her. There's the one lady who doesn't want to trust Max. There's yep. the leader who's like, "No, we need to drive the truck out of here, or we need to we need a way to move this truck and get out of here." And Max like, "Hey," he whistles, and everyone looks at him, and he's like, "Hey, I saw a truck two days down the road, or two days ago down the road that can haul that tanker. If you want to get out of here, talk to me." Talk so now Max is going to make his own deal. He's going to barter his own deal. And the deal is this. You give me enough fuel that I can carry. After this, I will go down the road and grab this truck for you. I just need two, two liters of gas and two liters of something else. Right. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember what he says. Like a uh, high test he needs diesel, diesel or something. He needs diesel and he needs uh, high performance fuel. 
Yeah. Yeah. Someone else hmm. go ahead from there. Um, so they deliberate for a moment and then, then yeah, the lady is like, well, what do we have to lose? And she's kind of right here. The only thing I have to lose is some fuel. Um, cause they're keeping his car. And that's what the other guy was like. Well, what if, what if he doesn't come back? He's like, well, he'll come back for his car. Right? Yeah, he's got to come back for his car because otherwise, yeah, because he's given a, he's given a stick and then he's got these. Yeah. He doesn't really he's have got a, it. He's got a whole lot coming with him. I guess he could leave in the truck, but he wants his car. Right. Yeah. Um, right. So he does, does he have his dog at this point with him or does the dog stay back? I think the, the dog, dog stays with the feral kid. I think you might be right. But the feral kid helps him out because um, there's one of the, the marauders is outside and almost catches. No, he does. The dog does come with him because he has to tell he has the to dog calm to calm down and tell him to be quiet. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He does take the dog yeah. with him. But the feral kid does some some fancy uh, whistling. Dog howling. And yep. Dog howling. And, um, and the marauder decides that it wasn't anything that he heard. They're, these are not the droids he's looking for. And he moves along. And uh, Mad Max is like, you know, nice work, kid, and uh, and goes and gets the truck. Did you just I, say these are not the droids you're looking for? Because that's awesome. I did, yeah. I did, yes. And, I then, like and then he and then he said something like Harrison Ford would, and it's like, nice job, kid. Nice yeah. job, kid. Like, yeah. Yeah. Nice Jason, kid. Jason's in don't a get, whole other just universe. Don't, just now. don't get khaki. Um, it's khaki, it's khaki. Uh, get so he gets khaki. a truck. He gets a truck, but now he's got to drive it back. And there's only there's no discreet way of doing this, right? Well, you got to bring in Gyro Captain because he's oh, here yeah, too. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the Gyro Captain is is there. Is he still in? He's still in handcuffs too. He's trying to get away, or he's walking away. I don't know. That he's trying to get away. He's walking away, and he's in handcuffs and. Um, Max sends the dog after him yeah. to to stop him, and then he lets I think he lets him loose, and they go put some of the fuel in the gyrocopter, fly to the truck, mm -hmm. and that's when gyro captain guy's like, "We're partners, we're partners." And Max's like, "Ah, fuck, do whatever you want." Throws him <laughs> the keys, throws yeah. him the keys to his cuffs, and then drives down the road. But thankfully, the gyro dude sticks with him. Well, the gyro dude goes back to the to the town, right? And he meets a lady there. Yes, not uh, yet. He helps him get the truck back. Well, yes, he has to throw true. snakes he, at a throwing, dude. He's throwing he has to throw snakes at a dude. Yeah, he has to throw snakes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. that's amazing. That would be that would be like a, a, a if there was an Atari game. That would That's be exactly a, what I was thinking. There would be there would be a little gyrocopter, and you'd have and to you like have throw to drop snakes, snakes down on yeah. the on the marauders. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I didn't want to miss him throwing snakes. <laughs> no, at yeah, people. throwing good snakes. Good call. Back to that. Yeah. Good call. It's the best. <laughs> but yeah, they they end up back at the uh, at the compound, and he meets a lady there, and that lady um, is I'm on the wrong movie. Hang on a second, uh, Arky Whittley. Um, now. She was in Razorback. We mentioned Razorback last uh -huh. uh, last. We did. She was also in Princess Caribou, which was one of the <laughs> last movies that Phoebe Cates was ever in. But um I was reading it's kind of sad. She ended up uh, kind of dying young. Um huh. she had adrenal cancer. Oh. oh. She um, semi reminded me of the blonde girl from the the hip dancer blonde girl from friday the 13th part five yes oh yes yeah. she has that very kind uh -huh. of like chipmunk cheeky kind of yep. round face yeah yeah but i also like that her like, is that her and i'm like i like her, her no way she's her. got she's got like yeah. a skunk a, 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 it's like a snorkel like what yeah, is that she's what? like a yeah. she's like a snork she's like a snork <laughs> she's like a, a snork from it's work a, it's a ponytail that goes straight up yeah. You don't do you not remember the snorks? Yeah, the, the snorks. They were made by the same people that did uh, the they Smurf were the, Smurfs. Yeah, they were the Hanna Barbera yeah. sequel to Smurfs. Yeah, they were yeah. underwater creatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the snorks. I said snorks from orcs, but that's Mork from Orc, but I do remember the snorks. There you <laughs> go. I'll say that yeah. five times fast. I did it good, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. I'm missing a tooth and I nailed it. And you're missing a tooth. <laughs> A gold star for Chuck, man. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 fighting through some things, listeners. I've um, had the right amount of makers. Don't let me have any more. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, she uh, she's a, she's a uh, she's kind of a very pleasant. Like she is the most well put together person in this whole movie. 
she looks like a, a she's kind of a representation of what yet could be had and what has been lost yeah. in a way. Yeah. And, and what's really kind of sweet is, is that she really takes to the gyro captain who is, let's face it, guys. He's a little messed he's, up looking. He's nutter yeah. butters. Yeah. yeah. Well, that too. He's nutter butter. He, he actually looks like he has nutter butters for physical <laughs> for attributes. Yeah. <laughs> that oh. too. <laughs> for teeth. <laughs> My God, at least he has teeth. <laughs> Fair I enough. I mean, no, but nobody's going to accuse Bruce Spence of being a handsome man, but they definitely well, normally lead. He looks they like definitely a lead, they, Yes, but they definitely lead into his, his more Angliness. eccentric. Get, yes, his, 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 his more eccentric uh, extreme features. And then, they, yeah. of course, they make his teeth look insane. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, yeah. So but he then, doesn't look like a catch, but maybe having a gyrocopter in the wasteland is is like. The, now, the sexiest thing ever. You right? wanna, you Mel Gibson some... is the sexiest thing in this movie, and he's the, probably the sexiest thing ever at this point in time. That's right? true. Probably. That's true. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, he, he is again. He is the man with no name. He he's bringing. Yeah. He's bringing something. Like he's he's got the. <clears throat> is, is that Riz? Is that what the kids call Riz? Yes, my there kids would say it's Riz for sure. Riz. Awesome. I got it. What about yeah. drip? Is that he's got a little drip too? It's, it's, the, drip. The, drip it's, is, the, it's the leather that he's wearing drip is, drip like is clap, the term right? they let us know riz is the term, oh, is the term that it actually yeah. is yes yeah. <laughs> that's what at the well, cool kids are actually style. saying it nobody, is but riz nobody is says a drip anymore yeah yeah nobody yeah. says drip anymore dad i roll yeah. <laughs> drip would be a part of riz, <laughs> but riz you can you can riz up on a hottie and oh, you'd probably yes. be dripping when you did it okay all right yeah. all right I, and right. don't I know? For, yeah, well, yeah. You for drip me. and ri- you're the Rizzler. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Can that be my name in the Mad Max world? <laughs> the Rizzler? The yes. Drip Rizzler. Yeah. The dr- and I just wear Rizzler. assless chaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got a mohawk. Oh, my mohawk. God. Anyway. Uh, I hope, I hope my, if my kids listen to this episode, they will correct me on my explanation of that, I'm sure. <laughs> too. You're well, not I'm, using it correctly in a sentence, Dad. Yeah, Dad. <laughs> Come on, anyway. Dad. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Um, and no, the, uh, here's another interesting thing about Arky uh, Whittley. Whitely, Whitley. I don't know. Anyway, um, apparently, when living with her parents at the Hotel Chelsea in New York as an infant, her babysitter was singer Janis Joplin. No what? Way. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Well, that's pretty fucking rad. Like, yeah, I and wish I could say rad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my, my I mean, I don't know if that's the best babysitter in the world, but <laughs> she turned out fine. She's like, oh, she's, she's, no, oh, <laughs> no, oh, no. And she's like slowly trying to put a like a I fork into a, <laughs> into like an outlet. <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, no, I mean, she turned out fine. She's in, she's like the princess of the Northland or North Shore or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. She turned Spoiler out fine. alert. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, no, she was, I mean, because she becomes actually kind of an important character in this because she convinces the gyro captain to not leave when he's like, we're all going to fucking die. I'm getting out of here. She kind of, she, she says she's staying. So he decides to stay. Right. But I mean, but like, it's a, it's a little different than convincing him to stay because sure, she sure. was willing I mean, to let him go, but he's like, because of you, I will stay, basically. Right. Yeah. But it, it serves him well in the long run. Um, yeah. But uh, no, he, um, uh, yeah, because she's also like, she is very like centered on like, you know, I'm going to stay, you know, it's like live or die. I'm staying with my friends, you know? So she actually is also the conviction that a lot of characters individually have lost too the the sense of community right right and and standing with her loved ones right Uh, because she represents what we could have right so she's like i cannot leave these people so they don't leave but max does decide he's like he's like deuces i'm out zero humanity yep like the cutest scene in this movie though is when he's loading up the gas and shit and feral 
boy or kid, feral feral kid. kid, the feral kid. Yep. The feral kid like drops into his car with his bag and he's like sitting in the door seat and he's like, I'm going with you. And he's, and and he's playing with the little music box that Max yeah, the had. music well, box happy, you gave yeah, him earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like he's idolizing Max and he's like, oh, this is the person to be with. Yep. This is salvation. Yep. Like that's what the feral would see as salvation, right? Yep. The badass do not the dream of the coast or the right. the civilization that might be ahead of you. Um, he also just wants to kick some ass. Yeah, he does want to kind of kick some ass. Like that's what I'm saying. He sees yeah. the future as like kicking ass and like yeah. surviving survival. Yeah. yeah, yeah. His his uh, his idea of survival is not running away and hiding. Yeah. Right. It's like taking the offense. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go fuck some shit up. But Max is like, no, you're not coming with me. Get out of the car. And Max is kind of stupid here. Because if he was smart, he would have waited for them to leave with the tanker and let everyone chase what they wanted and then just kind of backdoor the shit. But instead, he leaves before everyone does. Yeah. It's like maybe a, a, a semi last remnant of his older like you do your thing, I'm doing mine. Right. Yeah, he, he pays the price too. Or oh, more boy. accurately, the V8 pays the price. Boy, howdy! The whole well, the whole thing. I mean, he gets last of the V8s up pretty good. Yep. Until yep. the next movie. Yeah. So what happens to him? <laughs> Somebody tell me what happens to him. I don't remember. Uh, he well, he gets overtaken by the by the Marauders. Specifically, and, Wes. Yeah. Because because I I feel like Wes is acting independently. Because I think this is what gets him collared. Yes. And he, he, he breaks the windshield, right? And the windshield, what do we know? Oh, yeah. From the he, Mad he, Max he, movie? He steals the, he, yeah, he does. And he steals the, the, the Lord Humongous's nitrous car. Yeah. Too. That's how he catches him. That's how he catches him. Yep. Because, because the V8 should be the fastest thing in the wasteland, but that nitrous, well, nitrous, that nitrous gives the Lord Humongous the, the edge. Yeah. It would, not Lord, well. Wow. You, not in this case, but Wes in this case. Well, but yeah, was, what, what, what do we know about vehicle. Nitros from the Fast and Furious? I mean, Nos, man. That's, that, dude, I, I said Nos so many times. Oh, because I hit that Nos. Hit it's that like, Nos. yeah, because th- these movies also <laughs> invented the Fast and the Furious franchise. Well, I, I would argue <laughs> that Fast and Furious meets Mad Max would be a fucking awesome movie. Oh my Where's God. that I, movie? Why are Fury we not Road? there yet? Why are we not there yet? Well, this like, kind of Fury Road and sort. I want to see. I want to see The Rock, John Cena, Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, uh, Michelle I Rodriguez, mean, uh, Gal Gadot. I want to see the whole gang, Ludacris. I want to see the whole gang in the wasteland. Let's, Ludacris let's just, would be kind of useless because he wouldn't have the internet to do things. I know, hey but guys. they would do hacky analog shit. Oh, that's they true. would do hacky yeah. analog. Him shit. and the uh, Ramses. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is great. This is great. <laughs> no, somebody out there is on our side. Let us hear it. George Miller, come on. Do you hear us? <laughs> George, George Miller, Miller and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, James Wan. Yeah, co direct Co direct this. Write this movie. I almost said Lynn Swan. <laughs> Lynn Swan. That would have been great. <laughs> That's weird. Add football into the movie. Yeah. Now I'm Why? there. Oh, now yeah, I'm amazing there. catches. Well, well there amazing could be like catches. some sort of there could be some sort of death death sport in the wasteland. Like it resembles football. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you get a little rollerball oh. you know, angle. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I know. We're yeah. singing all the tunes now. Yeah. Sing all the tunes sung. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck, you would see this movie and you would love it. Probably not. Um, <laughs> but they break his windshield, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. what flips him out. He crashes because, flips, yeah, windshield. because of windshields flip cars. Yep. Yeah. Windshields yeah. flip cars. And he gets fucked up, but the promoter goes to steal his fuel while Max is behind a rock about to get shot by a guy. And we know that he has that trigger. On his fuel tank, if yeah. you try to take his fuel, his car is uh-huh. going to blow up. Yeah. So uh, basically, fortunately, he kills the dog first. Yeah, the dog gets shot. I didn't want to talk about that. I know. Makes me well, sad. that's the other guy. The promoter d- gets blown yeah, up. Yeah, it was the, the other, other guy. It was the other marauder. Well, the other the guy gets killed with the explosion, too. He shoots right. the dog. He's about to shoot Max. And yep. then the car explodes and takes all them out. And then Wes is like, it's over. He's yeah. dead. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm going to drive back home. Sorry, that, you're wrong. Never mind. We lost some guys. I mean, wrong. who's gonna, who's gonna, who's gonna like carnival bark for the for Lord Humongous now? You know, no, nobody. 
Right. Um, I mean, Wes but, can't can barely string sentences together since his power bomb no, got can't. killed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the gyro captain sees the explosion. He's like, "Oh, poor feller. I might as well go check what happened." And he finds them alive and brings them back to the camp. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, and the camp is like, "Man, he's you know." He's he's had a bad and and Max at this point is like fuck it I'll I'll drive your tanker. You don't and have any Max, of the choices. Max is kind of a schlub in this. Like he doesn't bit. really accomplish much. Well, in what movie aside from the first one does Max actually accomplish it's anything? True. It's he true. Is maybe always, Thunderdome a little, a, a little, little, a little, a little. Yeah. But but ultimately, Fury Road he kind of sucks. Well, he's but he's ultimately in, the even catalyst in, in most even of in his Thunderdome. Movies, it kind, not it's kind the of actual like, accomplisher. It's kind of like it ends with Tina Turner with her hand on her hip, just like oh Max, you know, just like didn't really like do much. Like a Bond but, movie, <laughs> but I guess, but I guess, but I guess, I, uh, you're good. Whatever, you know. It's yeah, yeah, you're right. He doesn't really accomplish much. But he's <laughs> he's more the catalyst that that escalates the story. To the, yeah. the it's kind of like James. Plot. James Bond and some of the lesser James Bond movies in my view. Yeah. To Where he kill. keeps getting yeah. caught and shit like that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I mean, Sorry. I guess, I mean, he does become like a means to an end. I guess, I guess I'm selling him a little bit short in Thunderdome, but that's next week. That's Cause he, that's cause he next does, week. he does help the children. He does a lot in Thunderdome. I he think. does. And he ultimately but. does a lot in Fury Road. So this is really the only one he doesn't do a ton. Well, what he does. I mean, he's fear, a good diversion in this one. Well, yeah. What, what, well, right. yeah. He's well, yeah. He's played. That's well, kind well, of like the the cool thing about it. he's not really a hero so much as he's always acting out of self interest, and then they use that to their advantage, yeah. unbeknownst yeah. to him. Yeah. But we'll, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll talk about what I think his actual role in in Fury Road is, but. Uh -huh. Um, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. I mean, we shall, I've, been, we shall. I've been watching a lot of, of YouTube channels that talk about how women are replacing men in movies. Oh, so God. I will talk about that when we talk oh, about boy. Oh, oh, no. boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Fuck oh, those no. guys. Anyway, oh, God. um, just, just been going to Jordan Peterson seminars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, to talk like <laughs> Kermit the Frog. Anyway, um, in my head, it sounds great. I don't Wait, know was that yeah, Kermit that the Frog? Sound so great. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, it was Jordan Peterson. Chuck. Anyway, oh. um, anyway, so uh, yeah, but Max at this point, he's like, yeah, I I'm going to drive the the tanker. You don't really have much of a choice. Um, the tanker has three people attached to it. There's the guy who's the mechanic who's uh, like a paraplegic, so he's always like floating around. Well, hold up, hold up, hold up. Like Origin, initially, initially, they're like, "How could you even drive it? He's so beat up. His he he only has one working eye. The other one is totally swollen over. The leader he, is he like, needs, uh, he needs the leader is like, I'm gonna I'm gonna drive it. What what good are you gonna be? But then he's like, get real, and then they agree, and it's almost kind of like in that moment, why? He's kind of right. Like, can the Road Warrior, can, can Mad Max really effectively drive this vehicle? But you find out they have an ulterior motive. Yeah. Well, not only that, but there is one, there's one really badass thing he does in that cab of that truck when he yeah. decides to, to, to take somebody out with yeah. the shotgun. Yeah. That's some iconic Mad Max, like freeze frame, like, that's that's a that's a picture you put on the back of the VHX, the VHS I mean, box. At the end of the day, he was kind of like it's sort of a suicide mission, right? And he actually number one survives, but he doesn't achieve the objective that he thinks he's there. To he achieve. thinks he is, right? Yeah, yeah it's right. It, it, this this whole chase turns out to be really kind of interesting because this leads to the death of characters you do not expect. Yeah, yeah. Um. But I think that there's a thematic reason for that. Do you think that the, the people on the tanker from the refinery, do you think they know that there's no hmm. spoiler? There's no there's no fuel in the tanker. Uh, yeah. Ultimately the tanker is being driven full of sand, not full of, of oil. But while yes. they're defending the truck, do you think they know that? Yes. You do? Because I think the original plan was to get so far, take the buggies up, mm -hmm. like they try to rescue the feral kid, 
Yeah. So they jump yeah, over that's true. The, the leader is in, is in one of the buggies, too. So he's yeah, with I think, them. Yeah. I think he's going to take the survivors back. Back. Like, that's jump over. Idea. Let's get the fuck out of here. We've yeah. done enough. We've done enough. Let's get let's let's beat Cheeks out yes. of here. And you yeah. don't realize it at that point, because when he right. says we, we tells the feral kid to jump. Yeah, because he does. Like, why is he saying we won? There's still yeah. people following them. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call. Yeah. Oh, huh, yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, the uh, yeah, the the leader, uh, Papagallo, Papagallo, he yeah. is uh, he's driving a car that looks like like a 1950s, like Formula One car. Like his car yeah. is kind of badass. It's all yeah. like silver and everything. It's kind of like yeah. half Formula One, half um, dune buggy. Yeah. Thing going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's he drives around and he he peels some of the um, marauders off. Yeah. To chase him, the uh, the gyro captain is is dropping um, uh, the Molotov Bombs, cocktails. Molotov right? cocktails, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you've got um, you've got, they're not gunners; they are um, they're crossbowers. Yep, positioned on the tanker, yep. and um, Max does not know that in between the cab and the tank is the feral kid, right? So, uh, and Max has a shotgun with him. So they, they head out into the sand. Everybody else goes the opposite direction. Um, somebody, a, a, a couple of the marauders follow the people in the other direction, don't they? A couple of the marauders go into the town and they stop to maybe pillage and the oh, town yeah. has been That's rigged. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another George Miller amazing fucking explosion. <sighs> yeah, that that, that whole town set. goes. I mean, that was, is... that was a fun day on set. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. Like... I mean, there's probably people. It was like the Indy 500, like tires flying into the stands and shit, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. right into the right into yeah. movie audiences all yes. across the world. Yes. <laughs> 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 like, oh, shit. <laughs> That's probably play. the moment he realized, man, I need to do this in 3D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, he, uh, yeah, the whole play and like, it is like, yeah, it's a big, one. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, huge. There's the, the, you could see that one for miles. I'm sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, but then, um, one of the people on the tanker gets killed relatively quickly. Then a couple of the other people on the tanker, one is the warrior woman. And one is the mechanic guy. Now, these are like real characters that have been around for this movie. I mean, and they are sitting ducks. Yeah. And they do die. Yeah. Um, I like the guy though in the back with the, he's on fire. Oh, his yeah. legs are on fire and his and his and then he tries to pat it out with his hands and then his hands are on fire and warrior woman looks at him he's like he's like waving at her with fiery hands he's like i'm okay i'm okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah just like trying That's to pat himself out dude yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah yeah the paraplegic guy yeah oh god that was funny yeah and then <laughs> but yeah she ends up uh she dies first of of those two um because she gets um i think Wes arrowed. shoots her yeah she gets arrowed and then she, she falls and she's like stuck on the side. And then like he goes back to try to pull her up back on top of the thing. But then these other guys come across to pull her down to ultimately run over her with the buggy that they're on. And they pulls pull him, him with her. Uh, yeah. yeah. So they're gone. Like Max has nothing mm-hmm. but the feral kid at this yeah. point. And, yep. uh, and the, the leader comes back and, um, he gets fucked pretty good too this is when he's like telling the feral kid get on we've won and he's gonna leave max to die basically yeah. and then what's he's he like, get We're gonna... for it he gets shot in the back with some four clawed phantasm looking motherfucking thing yeah oh, yeah basically lord yeah. humongous has got he comes he comes equipped like fucking aquaman and he's got tridents with him <laughs> Yeah, Jesus. Lord he oh, yeah, we nuts. got the gyro captain too up there, and he gets shot down because he he's, he's dropping, he's dropping fire bombs. Yep. Yeah, and he gets shot down. So like, Max <clears> is <throat> pretty much left alone at this point, and uh, he and and he gets attacked. Like, uh, um, well, Wes, yeah, Wes gets, gets on. Yeah, yeah. 
And he, and the, he he sticks Max in the shoulder, in the left shoulder with a thing. And is that the is that the guy that the feral kid bites? Is that Wes? No, I think it's no, like Wes. Else. Wes gets in the front, and the other guy gets yeah. in the back. Yeah, and Wes gets seemingly thrown off, right? But in reality, he's on the front, and Max right. is sending the feral kid get the out to shell. get the bullets, the yeah. shell. Yep, the last shell. Max has also Wes... turned around to face the Marauders too. Yeah. Yes, he's done a three or one eighty. One eighty. Yep. yep. And while he's doing that, Wes comes up and is trying to pull the feral kid off the front. Max is holding on to the feral kid. The guy's dead behind him. The guy's dead behind him, but also the leader. Lord Humongous is Lord coming. Lord Humongous. Humongous is like. He's hit the NOS, hey. man. He's hit his nitrous shit. Go ahead, Jason. What? No, no. That's he, hit the, he hit the NOS, and he's driving straight at the truck. I don't but know, he doesn't realize, I don't think, that the truck has turned around. Had turned around because he's, he, he's, yeah, trying, to he's catch, trying to not, catch it up. Yeah. But, yeah, um, but, but, but he, yeah, he can't control that damn thing. It's going way too fast. And he hits the truck and he, he explodes right into Wes. Yeah. And big fiery ball of flame that the, that the semi truck hits and drives through, but ultimately it flips the, the truck. Yep. Um, and, uh, but yeah, Max that's and a pretty the feral big kid, collision. Yeah. Max and feral kid are fine. And that's when we see what's pouring <clears throat> out of the tanker. Now, by the way, yeah. not all of the Marauders are dead. The rest of them are no. like, well, shit, our leader, our leader yeah, and his just, lapdog are dead. We got to get the fuck out. Yeah, of they and they might also the see the sand pouring out. Of yeah. The, and it's like, fuck too. this. We lost too much. Yeah. yeah. They hit the road. Yeah. And they don't and, come back no more. <laughs> no. And then, and then we get our ending no. voiceover because we well, no, see wait, but because the, because the, uh, up drives the uh because the 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 gyro captain can actually oh, yeah. drive it on he yeah. doesn't have to fly the thing he can right, drive right. it so yeah. he comes up and he he like kind of knowingly nods at like ha, 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 and, <laughs> and max is like ha, 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 and yeah. and like okay <laughs> and then they they talk about like you know the the narration comes up and says you know it's like you know the gyro captain became the leader yeah he takes the uh, feral I think kid back def- to the group yeah, and I think by default he ends up winning the the like the crown because he's the only one who comes back from this alive. <laughs> yeah, and he Maybe. And, and, the, and you find out that all the all the um, oil has been stored in drums in the bus mm-hmm. rather than in the tanker. So they've got all all of it with them, and it was all, all the cars had all, all the cars, cars had had, had yeah, it. Had, yeah. Was, were filled with fuel. <clears throat> it was a and diversion. then you also find out that the narration. Is done by the feral kid. By the feral kid. Yeah, yeah. he learned how to and, talk after all. Yep, and by when... So, yeah, it's the whole thing. Like, if he went with Max early and they survived, he'd always be the feral kid. Right? Yeah. Since so, so he went, yeah. went with the promise of civilization or was forced that way. He became civilized. civilized. He became civilized. Mm-hmm. Um, and becomes the leader. He when, does. After the gyro captain does. Yeah, uh-huh. it's uh, apparently... that I would assume that the gyro captain... And the um, and his girlfriend ultimately become the, I mean, like she's the other like co leader or whatever, and they kind of adopt the feral kid is what I. And they probably add him. Becomes chief of the great northern tribe. Yeah. What was that, Chuck? Sorry. Oh no, you're fine. I was probably saying I was saying they probably Adam and Eve, the start of whatever civilization comes from. Oh, the well, there's tribe. probably only one other woman still alive, and that's the that's the one who's kind of always the one just on the council like, yeah, who's just like let's trust let's, let's just try, try. Trust. She probably doesn't last much longer if that's her. <laughs> yeah. So they probably are the only ones that have kids, like to yeah. start. Yeah, that whatever happens later. Yeah, I mean, I suppose so. Um, Could, I but the Road Warrior. Couple, I thought there oh, were sorry. a couple of other kids or uh, women in the. There town, might have maybe been. not. Well, a few of them die. So sure. we don't know. There, there, we don't yeah, know there were. Look. There were because they, they show at least one other in the bus when they're driving off in the window with like in front of the tanker. Um, I'm pretty sure. I yeah. Well, yeah. whatever. I mean, it's the it's the same kind of concept, right? Because they did see that that northern beach to be kind of like paradise. So, yeah, 
there is obviously kind of an Adam and Eve kind of idea. Yeah, that's here. why I said it. I know. That's I'm, that's I'm, a, I'm, that's I'm, funny I'm too. I'm supporting that they, you. I'm supporting their, your their Riz. whole their <laughs> whole their whole basis for this place is based on a on a tourist brochure. brochure. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. But you know what though? It's that's like that's oh, that's, that's all the hope that's actually in this movie. This is a pretty yeah. dreary movie, even though oh, it's so sure. badass. Like, but it yes. gives you a little more hope than you you'd expect because mm-hmm. in any other post-apocalyptic film when you arrive at your destination it's it is fucked. not what you hoped uh, yeah well this that's one, true the next two movies prove that out but right. do they though i mean like again this is just the this is this is the end of this story right whoever the road warrior was was either max rockatansky or it's just the road warrior right 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 this is the this is yeah like the the gospels right it's all i think this is the one you can uh, only the only one you can definitively say is max rockatansky Rockatansky. right well yeah because after the first first. yeah yes they say it's him the other ones he's just called mad max but it's a version of him right? right It's a, it's a, it's the, the feral kids version of him. Well, yeah, the feral right? kids like Peter, you know, right? Yeah. Oh He's yeah, the book. Yeah, I mean, yeah. legend versus person. Sure. And who knows but how think- many? Who knows how many people he told this story to, and then they all change it. Maybe one of their versions of it ends up being next week's movie. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, which is. Mad Max Similar, is the only, but not right. Right. Mad Max is the only Bible I'm going to care about. <laughs> sure. Because these stories are awesome. <laughs> awesome. There's there's some pretty metal stuff in the Bible that that most people don't want to talk about. But yeah. well, no, there is. But I mean, but like, <laughs> but is it Mad Max? I mean, <laughs> has anyone done that? Has anyone done that? Like a post apocalyptic new Bible kind of character that's like symbolic of christ oh yeah I mean, there's, there's they, like they a have, new writing monster. they have actually um it's kind of sort of what you're you're describing the book of eli it's well kind i've of seen that. that yeah i thought that was past but yeah i've seen book of eli that's cool the first one you said, anyway. po- you said post-apocalyptic though yeah biblical yeah. post-apocalyptic but it's kind of kind of what they're going for there i think yeah i'm with you okay fair yeah yeah it's a little preachy for my taste but yeah Uh, it got that way at the end it wasn't that way for most of it they're making a tv show of that are they interesting yeah Yeah. is it gonna be like like this movie a lot oh that's a good show that was a good show i've heard it's a good show it's it was a real real good show um and skeet ulrich yep uh the shit no, this is this is a good movie. It, it's so funny how for what ninety three minutes or whatever this movie is, yeah. it pretty much takes place in a very defined spot. Yeah, but it yeah. feels large. Oh. It's like six total miles. Of, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I when have, you don't have a whole lot of gas, six miles is a lot. Yeah, I have a couple style notes please um the the uh truck the guy in the truck at the beginning when um he's sponging up the fuel that guy has bulgy eyes yep he does yep so when he died he definitely did the bulgy eye thing um the side swipes very star wars-esque side swipes in this oh yeah Oh yeah, yeah. I noticed that too. I was like, oh. like, de- like, like Tatooine esque. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Um, this is a movie that uh, did, for the most part, uh, get pretty good. Pretty good reviews, like from from the top, uh, you know, from like the top uh, uh, critics. Like Ebert gave it three and a half. Uh, Vincent Camby was, you know, high praise for it. Um, Leonard Malton, big Leonard fan. Malton. Um, well, yeah, he did the opening. You for watched this that too? Yeah, on the yeah, disc. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I didn't watch that, but I was like, oh, yeah, Leonard Malton. 
Yeah, um, that's pretty good too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it is, this is, I mean, I don't think like good reviews aside and two more sequels and, and soon to be a third movie that, that, that carries on beyond this. Right. But like, I don't think people really understand that this is, this is the movie that sets the, the whole tone and the whole look of what post-apocalyptic movies are for the, for the last 40 plus years. Like this is, this is a, an incredibly influential movie. Yeah. Um, I mean, like it is uh, uh, the desert, the, the desolation, the lack of, you know, I mean, like I, I would even say that going as far as, you know, something like the walking dead uses mm. a lot of the same kind of ideas and concepts that this movie does. It's just greener than this movie is. Um, yeah. You know, but like it's, uh, th- there is this sense of hopeless struggle. And interestingly, in the Mad Max film, he's called a zombie. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. I mean, after watching this again, you know, I do sit here and wonder. It's like, as as influential as Romero was to to like Robert Kirkman. <laughs> Could this have also been just as influential or maybe even a little bit more with how he crafted characters and, and the settings and, and how he made the world look as opposed I think, to. I think definitely the villains in a lot of ways or, or the larger than life characters from the Walking Dead series. especially oh, from, Especially from the comics. Yeah, Negan. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Chuck, did you ever read any of the comics of The Walking Dead? Uh, I think Yes. But I couldn't tell you how many, maybe enough through the first compendium. Yeah. Like that number of comics. Because once you get into like, oh, here comes the, uh, you know, here comes the, the governor and oh, here's Negan. Those, those escalate mm-hmm. hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like Lord Humongous showing up to cut you a deal. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. Lord it is very humongous. much like that. Yeah. 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 Um, no, this is, I mean, a high, high praise for this movie. It's, it's so simple. It's, you know, so straightforward, but there's still so much here. That's just, I mean, this is, this is among the tops of like the eighties pop culture type movies. Okay. Oh, so yeah. this will, this will be easy then. Did anyone else have anything to say? No, I was going to actually mention you wanted to do a thing. So tell us about Let's yes. do a thing. So, so March Madness, right? Yeah. Sports fans. We have basketball. We have, you know, a tournament with brackets. Yep. I propose we put the first two movies against each other, advance one, and then the next two movies against each other and advance one. And then we have a winner from yep. those. I like it. So I feel we don't really need to discuss this one. Maybe there'll be more discussion in two weeks from now. Absolutely. Like, is is anyone going. going to advance Mad Max over the Road Warrior? No. No. So Road Warrior advances. Road Warrior advances. It will take on either Fury Road or Thunderdome. Thunderdome in a few yep. weeks. Yep. Yep. That's it. It's pretty That's simple it. here. There might be more of a conversation. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're already later. in the final four here. <laughs> we'll yeah. talk. We'll like, talk about. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish this uh, this madness up with a good old fashioned semifinal and final matchup uh, in yeah. two weeks. Yeah, um, I love it. No, one one last thing I will say about what I was saying about how influential this movie is. Um, interesting story. If if you can uh, if you can. Uh, 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 whatever um, <laughs> we can we can whatever oh, I, I, I can whatever yeah okay. i've been whatever um, in my whole life yeah well, whatever right <laughs> um so in the upcoming like here in a few months there will be an episode of b movie anima of the series in which i watch the movie uh warrior of the lost world starring robert ginty and uh donald pleasance and it is a post-apocalyptic movie. Donald Pleasance is like this leader of like this uh, section of the apocalypse and Robert Ginty has to fight him or whatever. Right. Uh, but it is, it, it is obviously a movie that is inspired by the road warrior 
in particular. I mean, the main difference is that the Ginty drives a, a motorcycle instead of a um, a car, and his and his motorcycle talks to him. It's a whole thing. Um, but when I work with with Carolyn, my co-host, uh, who plays Nurse Disembody on this, um, she watches the movies and she sends me notes so that I can kind of weave that into the to the scripts and everything. And uh, she said on her own that she thought that this was a very Mad Max movie. And it is because it's inspired directly by the Road Warrior, not by Mad Max, but by the Road Warrior. It's like it's very specifically, again, Mad Max is the movie that is is not the movie that people think it is. If they say, oh, that's Mad Max, they're probably thinking of Mad Max 2, a.k.a. the Road Warrior, when they see the loner on the on the street, you know, or, or on yeah. the road that's coming to save the day, sort of kind of reluctantly you know but it's it's it, again it's it, it goes back to that whole thing about how mad max maybe set the tone of you know there's a character that that's going to be out there but really it's the road warrior that sets the stage truly for everything that this is remembered for on a kind of cultural level so for sure just, just kind of pinning that down because mad max will get mentioned again um in in the future but immediately he's going to be mentioned next week i was wondering where you were going with that <laughs> so i was like next but week? i should say i should say the road warrior is really what's going to be mentioned uh again in the future but yeah so next uh wednesday february 20th you can go to filmseizure.com you can listen to our episode of mad max beyond thunderdome yeah um that's one of those titles from the 80s kind of like um electric boogaloo that you know like beyond thunderdome beyond you know it's like that thunderdome is is something that almost becomes like a pop culture reference in itself uh but it's the movie that actually probably got the best reviews out of all of them um but we're going to talk about that next week um you can go to filmseizure.com you can listen to all of our episodes you can find out where all of our uh social media is and where you can subscribe to the podcast at there um also this upcoming monday at filmseizure.com i got a new episode of monster mondays which will be uh the cat creeps interesting nice. little uh little murder mystery more than it is actually a monster movie but there is an element a potentially spooky uh, uh supernatural element find out if it really is the case or not so you can go to filmseizure.com to listen to that as well this upcoming Friday uh, at bmovieanima.com, I've got a review of Bong of the Living Dead. Uh, speaking of Living Dead, and the speaking of zombies. Um, interestingly enough, at B Movie Enema on the 22nd of March is The Cars That Ate Paris. So I am still sticking around the uh, Australian thing there nice. and the Bruce Spence thing. So, um, yeah. Bitch. So. Gosh, guys, uh, I'm going to hop in my gyrocopter and uh, get the <laughs> hell out of here. What do you guys think? I'm coming with you. Well, you, you're the bitch and back. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> Lord Humongous has to finish this uh, episode out. Uh, so until then, I am Jeff Arbuckle. I'm Chuck Humongous. <laughs> I'm Jason Oliver, and you have been listening to Film Seizure.